What you're about to see and the place we're about to take you has been hidden from the world for almost 2,000 years. It began in biblical times when Abraham walked through these mountains and King David hid in these caves, hiding from King Saul. The Maccabees fought here and the Jews fought off the Romans in their final revolt. And as these mountains laid barren for 2,000 years, as the Jewish people have returned to the mountains of Judea, what was once a desert is now flourishing. That's right, a desert. The world would call this place Midbar Yehuda, the Judean desert. But as you're about to see, this place is far from a desert. It is a Garden of Eden-like oasis, bringing to life prophecies from thousands of years ago. But not just prophecies about the land, prophecies about what is happening in our hearts and the hearts of the nations that are coming from around the world to this place and realizing what a Jew is doing in Judea, who we are as a people, and how to connect with the God of Israel. As we see ancient prophecies come to life, we invite you to the mountains of Judea at the Land of Israel headquarters. I'm Ari, this is Jeremy. I was born in Texas, fourth generation. I came here to Israel about 18 years ago, half my life. It was supposed to be just for a few months, but almost immediately I fell in love and realized this is where I would be for the rest of my life. I met Jeremy and together we've dedicated our lives to sharing the truth and the beauty of Israel with the world. Calling the Jewish people back home, in gathering the exiles, empowering the Jewish people here in the land of Israel, helping return us to our identity as who we are as Jews, and to reach out with an arm of love and mercy and friendship to the nations of the world. That's what we've been doing all these years, that's what brought us to this place, and that's our mission until this very day. So we are in the heart of Judea. 20 minutes that way is Hebron, about 25 minutes that way is Jerusalem, and about 15 minutes that way is Bethlehem. And so we're literally in the heart of biblical Israel. Now why is this place called the West Bank and not Judea? If you look on every map in the world, you'll see Judean mountains, Judean desert. In the Bible, it's called Judea. Every book in history, it's called this place has been called Judea. Why does the world call it the West Bank? because it's very easy to say, settlers occupying the West Bank, evacuate now. But really what they're saying is Jews get out of Judea. And so our purpose in being here is first and foremost, the Jewish return to Judea, because why are Jews called Jews? We're not called Jews because of the tribe of Judah. Mordechai, the first man in the Bible called a Jew, was from the tribe of Benjamin. He was called a Jew because he was from this place. Japanese are called Japanese because they're from Japan. Chinese are called Chinese because they're from China. Jews are called Jews because we're from Judea. That's right, there's nothing more natural than a Jew in Judea. This place is not only important for uh, spiritual reasons, but also for strategic reasons. There's a story of George W. Bush in a helicopter with Ariel Sharon. And he says, without Judea and Samaria, Sharon says to Bush, Israel is just nine miles wide. And Bush said, nine miles wide? We got driveways longer than that in Texas. It's impossible to defend a country that's nine miles wide. If you ask pastors, imams, rabbis, everybody is agreeing that we're in messianic times. And the book of Zechariah, Zechariah, talks about there will be an earthquake. The Mount of Olives and Mount Zion will rip apart. And from the foundation stone, there will be living waters that flow directly from Jerusalem through Nachal Arugot, which is right here, all the way to the Dead Sea, bringing it back to life, which will, of course, make this beachfront property. But the point is that the miracles that were foretold thousands of years ago are coming true before our very eyes and through our very hands. What we're building in this farm, in these headquarters, is a window into the Messianic era. God gave us a vision written down by the prophets of Israel, black ink on white paper, and that vision was passed down from generation to generation. And what we know is that we are living in the times that those prophecies are now beginning to pass. 
that there will be Jews living in Judea, that the righteous among the nations will come, celebrate with us, live alongside us during the holidays. And now we're building that vision in a real way, manifesting that dream in reality. The prophet Isaiah said, Ki beiti beit amim, for my house is a house of prayer for all nations. And we're starting to understand as we return home that we have a responsibility for the nations of the world and that the temple we've been praying for is not just a Jewish temple. It's a temple for all of the nations to come together and worship the one God of Israel, the one God of the world. And that's what all of us, all of humanity is arriving at that point. And this place will have something to do with that shifting consciousness bringing us to that awareness of God. So now we arrive at the heart of the property. Now very soon this will have two floors. There'll be 18 suites, studio-like apartments. In the middle of the top floor will be our educational center, where lectures, prayers, workshops, meditation sessions are held. Now imagine what it would be like for people to come here for one solid week to be disconnected from the rest of the world in the mountains of Judea, to learn the prophets where the prophets prophesied, to learn the book of Psalms where, literally in the place where David wrote many of them. Just straight ahead, you can actually see Masada from here. And Masada is the most visited tourist attraction in Israel and people go to see what was 2,000 years ago. But these walls here are built a meter thick They'll be here 2,000 years from now. This is more than a building. This truly is a monument. And to learn Torah here, to pray here, to come together here for a week, for two weeks, in the seminars that the Land of Israel Network will be hosting, will transform the world. This will be a place of healing. Not just healing for the Jewish people, but healing for the nations of the world. Sometimes I feel like that's what the world needs. We've been through so much, we just need to let out one big cry. This will be a place to come together with love and forgiveness and to connect in an all new way to the God of Israel. The most prophesied event in the Hebrew Bible is the ingathering of the exiles. And now we can see from the four corners of the world, the Jewish people have returned to our ancient homeland. The first settlement, the first new Jewish city was made in Tel Aviv, right on the coastline. And since then, the Jewish people have been returning more and more into our biblical land. Where we are right now is the furthest most outpost of pioneering Jewish settlement in Judea. Literally the cutting edge of the Jewish return to the land of Israel. And as a message to the nations that come and learn here, right across this mountain ridge are the mountains of Moab. Now imagine Ruth is the archetype figure of the nations that came into Israel right next to Bethlehem and joined Israel. And now looking at Moab, inviting the nations to come and learn Torah with us here in the land of Israel. It's as if the Bible has come to life. I just gotta say, uh, for Caleb and I, we're ecstatic to be here on the farm and just see the beginnings of something really amazing. We're just grateful for rabbis like yourself that have taken it upon yourselves to even think about the nations, I guess. And really, Caleb and I, as Christians' position, is just in complete uh, awe that you would even allow us to sit on your porch, that we could be here and have anything to do with the, really the redemption that's happening in the land of Israel. Mm -hmm. And you guys starting this and us coming and saying, wow, how can we help? You think you know awe. Uh, we're the ones in awe, <laughs> okay? Because I got to tell you, we've oh. been, what's been so great about our, our friendship is that it's gone back so long. Mm -hmm. What you guys have done mm -hmm. is quite a miraculous testimony mm -hmm. to our times. Right, coming from Tennessee, it was just you volunteering. Who are these guys? And now thousands of people from all over the world. Yeah. As great as you guys are, it's hard not to see God's providence and abundance blessing you. The truth is, it would be is... great if you guys were both Jews and we'd be sitting here, and that'd be nice. I mean, we need some good looking Jews on our team. But uh, there's something even better mm. that you guys are from the nations. Right over there, uh -huh. on a clear day, you can see the mountains of Moab. Mm. And who was from Moab? Ruth. Wow. Ruth, she's like the exemplary of the nations. The mm. Moabites are the ones that were considered spiritually the most distant from the nation of Israel. And it was Ruth that made this journey literally from right over there, right past the Dead Sea, into these mountains to Boaz's fields, which is Bethlehem, which is right here. Right. And so the fact that we're here in this place, mm. 
opening the gates up to people from around the world that want to come here and learn Torah and celebrate Shabbat with us mm -hmm. and work the land with us to somehow figure out their place in this unfolding story. It is destiny unfolding. And you yeah. guys are helping us and the Jewish people understand our place because for thousands of years, right, we're in Europe and in, in Arab countries and literally we're just like, don't kill us, leave us alone. That's the best case scenario. And now we're back in the land and we're realizing we don't, we have a responsibility to the world on some level. I know this could sound controversial, but I think a lot of the anti-Semitism in the world is a deep subconscious resentment against the Jewish people for not actually speaking up. Hmm. for not actually sharing our message of godliness with the world. We're an hmm. Amkoanim, we're a nation of priests. We're not supposed to just be accountants and lawyers. Hmm. We're, we're supposed to be sharing our love for God with the world and right. bringing them to this place for them to pursue God because this is where God lives. Right. And it's not just our understanding of God. Right. Those who are seeking to understand God, this is where they come to. Many from the nations, thousands, and it's gonna be millions, and Lord willing, billions, are going to begin to see that light. And I think one of the biggest impacts just from the top, somebody comes here to Israel, they automatically see you, and your uh, holiness in keeping Shabbat is such a beautiful thing. I can remember the first time I came to Israel. I went to a Jewish family, gathered around a Shabbat table. Every family member was present, honoring to their father, honoring to their mother. And I just thought, whoa, man, we could do that. And we've, we've taken Shabbat, and we've learned more about Shabbat through you as the Jewish people, and it's been a huge blessing. And I think every family that I've ever heard of in the nations that even said, wow, there's holiness in the Shabbat, to set aside the day just to honor God and to study and to pray and to just to be a set-apart day has had amazing impact, not only in their personal life, their families, their business, just there's a blessing that comes in walking in this gift that you've given to the world if they would accept it. And there's going to be a place where people can come from every nation around the globe and sit here and maybe have a Shabbat yeah, with yeah. you guys. What's and awesome learn about what's Shabbat so is that it. it's like literally in the Ten Commandments. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like right there. It's undeniable. It's well, like, right. wow, I, like, I love the Ten and Commandments. And that brings us together as well. And I think that once Shabbat, the door is open there, then mm -hmm. the whole Torah is a blessing. All of the Torah is good. Hashem yeah. gave it to us as a blessing, as yeah. a guide mm -hmm. in our life. Yeah. The world, we believe, is on a trajectory of tshuva, on a trajectory mm -hmm. of return. We're all on our way back to Eden. But what is it returning to? If you go back to like the beginnings of Christianity, there were no cathedrals. Mm -hmm. The beginnings, beginnings were here in this land. The beginnings had to do with the Torah. The beginnings had to do with the Jewish people. The beginnings were in Judea. Mm -hmm. So to actually get root in who you are, it's actually a return to the Torah. The nations will only find their identity with God if it's rooted in the Torah. And I think the Jews, that's finally, we have a purpose now to actually say like, well, what is the Torah relevant for the nations? How do we then now bridge this gap that the nations are like, the Torah, that's been done away with. Shabbat, we do Sunday. Right. We do and this other And you think you're going through an identity crisis. We as the Jewish people, we've spent thousands of years thinking we're a religion. We're just another religion. We're not a religion, we're a nation, we're mm -hmm. a family. Wow. We're a family, and that's such a fundamental shift. And when you think about the manifestations of what that means, it changes absolutely everything. When Israel was destroyed 2,000 years ago, the blessing of God left the land of Israel and went to the nations. When Israel was reestablished in 1948, the blessing of God left the nations and came back to the land of Israel. And the only way the nations can receive that blessing is by standing alongside with the Jewish people, and then God will allow that blessing to go forth from the land of Israel to their nation. Genesis that the, 12. The, that the people of the world can participate in the blessing of God is by standing for the land and for the people that God has chosen to be here. That can actually be signed, sealed, and delivered. I have mm -hmm. never met a person that has mm -hmm. come to Israel mm -hmm. that didn't say, that was just a huge blessing in my life. Yeah. Never met a single person. Thousands of people come here. Every single person that walks this land, it's just an immediate reality. It's a promise in the Torah that you will be blessed. Mm -hmm. You stand alongside Israel, you get the blessings of Israel. It's just the reality that is. So much from the rest of the world are so connected to the, the economic blessing. But you know what the real blessing in the world today <laughs> that I think most people don't even realize is even achievable or even thought? When I'm sitting right here at this table. It's like, it's peace. It's peace. It's like when you're walking through the streets of Jerusalem, there's peace. And I think that is the true blessing of God. The true blessing of God is being able to think, to dream, and to be the person and confident in the person that he has created you to be. And that is something the whole world is in crisis about. The whole world is on anti-anxiety medication, mm -hmm. anti-depression medication, mm -hmm. and you come here and there's just serenity, mm -hmm. peace and joy. It's mm -hmm. true. It says, I will bring you in from the four corners of the earth 
and people will know that you are my people and that I am your God. Discover for yourself the miracle of the land and the courageous hearts of the people of Israel. I am 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 Israel. Visit IamIsraelFilm.com to begin your journey. It was in these hills that the prophet Amos had his nevuah, had his prophecy. He said, V'shafti shvutam Israel, and I will return the exiles of my nation Israel. And they will plant vineyards and drink their wine. And they will plant gardens and eat their fruit. As we were planting these gardens, as we were planting these trees, I had this feeling that perhaps it was the very actions that are happening through our hands that the Prophet Amos saw. And I actually stopped and waved and said, Shalom Amos! Hello to the Prophet Amos! Maybe it was us that he was looking at at that moment. Because it's just the honor and the privilege of sticking our hands in this earth. Because in the end of the day, this is what we're made of. The Jewish people are made of this land. The sages say that Moses wanted to enter the land of Israel. He wanted so badly to eat the fruits and the grains of the land of Israel. Why? Because we're made of this earth. And when we eat the fruits and the grains, our physical bodies become the land of Israel. And we're able to connect to God like we never were able to for 2,000 years during the exile. If you look on the maps, it says that this is the desert of Judea. But if you look down, this isn't desert land. This is earth. This can be planted, this can be cultivated. But for 2,000 years, all that was here was just rocks and thorns. Because in the 36th chapter of Ezekiel, Ezekiel is commanded to prophesy to the mountains of Israel. And he says, trees, give forth your branches and give forth your fruit for your children Israel, for they are soon to come. In the Jewish tradition, there is no sure sign of the coming of Mashiach that when the mountains of Israel start bearing fruit again. And here we are planting fig trees and planting our vineyards, just as the prophets of Israel promised, here in these barren hills of Judea that are now coming back to life. Just a year ago, there was nothing in these fields, and now there's over a thousand olive trees and over 2,000 fruit trees. Every week is something new at the farm. This week we have over 10 Germans that have come here that wake up early in the morning and they've been out in the fields pruning our olive trees. And now people from all over the world are coming to this place where Amos spoke to learn Torah together with us, to work the land together with us, to celebrate Shabbat together with us. And here we see just 70 years ago, these people were our greatest enemy. And now they've come to stand shoulder to shoulder with us. It is the beginning of redemption. Imagine what these fields will look like in 20 years from now. We will have built the Garden of Eden together with the righteous among the nations and with the help of God. When King Solomon said, Ein chadash mitachat l'shemesh, there's nothing new under the sun, for the first time in my life, I really wonder whether he was right. As these Germans, children and grandchildren of Nazis, are coming here to the land of Israel, just yesterday morning something happened that was so unbelievable to me, it took me the whole day just to internalize it. One of our workers said, well, what we need is the men to go and build the synagogue and the women to prune the olive trees. So it was difficult for me to say the words from my mouth. I couldn't tell why, but I said, men, you go to build the synagogue. Women, you go in this direction for the olive trees. And here I was, a Jew, saying to the children and grandchildren of Nazis who put men in one line and women in the other, and here I am doing the same thing but in Judea, and they were rejoicing. What is happening here, this is an unfolding experience, a revelation of what redemption will be like. Just a little taste we're able to experience in our times. Excuse me. To me, one of the most exciting things that's happening in the world today is that there is a hunger in the non-Jewish world to learn Torah. All over the world now, non-Jews are starting to keep Shabbat. I mean, in Japan, in North America, in South America, people want to reconnect to the Torah. And Maimonides, the Rambam, said that, of course, the Torah is good. It was given by God. Ultimately, the whole world is going to want to keep the Torah because they're all going to want to be blessed by the goodness of the Torah. And to see now this shift in the world, that Art Scroll, which is like the largest Jewish publication, 
their biggest clients now are non-Jews. That that's happening, that the more Bibles are being sold to non-Jews than they are to Jews, it's unprecedented. And so the fact that there is no Jewish institution in the land of Israel that's open to teaching non-Jews Torah, and the fact that this place will be a place for the nations to come and learn Torah, to learn about Shabbat, to learn about Sukkot, to learn about what it is to be a man that lives by the Word of God. What does that mean for the nations? There's such a hunger for it in the world, and now there's a place that will house them. And is that not our mandate, to bring those values in that Torah to the world, to be a light to the nations? Right, and the reason we say Torah and not Bible, because Bible in Latin means book, whereas Torah means teaching. It's a living guide. Uh, it's a living guide. Here's the question. A non-Jew comes to this place for a week-long seminar. What do you think they walk away with? Questions. They walk away with questions and with inspiration and with excitement and with the number of a travel agent to book their next flight to Israel as soon as possible to come back to this place. They're, they're connected with the people and the land and the God of Israel in a new way that they couldn't imagine. And they'll take that fire and bring it with them to the rest of the world wherever they go. Yeah, I think that once you really start to learn Torah, so not only do you have more questions and you become more curious, but it's almost like it whets your appetite and you just want more. To realize that it is infinite in its wisdom, that there is so much more to delve into, to really lust after learning more about Hashem's ways in the world. Right, Hashem's ways in the world and Hashem's unity. That Hashem, God is one. And when we're able to share this consciousness, that is what brings Mashiach. When we realize that we're all God's children, not in our heads, but in our hearts, then what, a sword beat into a plowshare? We're all a family and all of humanity is what I'm talking about. We're all one family. And we each have our skills and our gifts that God has given our nation and our people. That if we contributed to the good of all mankind, it's just happiness and love and goodness. And that's what I think this place is about. That's what the return of the Jews to the land is. That's what the temple is about. For my house is a house of prayer for all nations. All nations will come. Right now there's this Arab-Israeli conflict. I mean, I believe that when the time comes when we are serving our purpose and being a light unto the nations, our cousins, the Arabs, they're going to want to be coming with us and helping us build the temple. It's just as much for them. If they knew the joy and the happiness that would be awaiting them, I used to be like, oh, this is my land. Israel is my land. And while it's true that God did give the land to us, even more true for me is that I belong to this land. And that's a little bit different because that leaves room for others to belong to it as well. What the land belongs to me, we belong to it. And so if there are those that love the God of Israel and want to live at peace with us as family, then I say, come and join us here in Israel. Come and be here and come for the, for the high holidays. Come with us to the temple and worship there together. I know it sounds very grand and so far off, but I believe it's right within our grasp and right within our times. This place is really the jewel of the whole headquarters. It's an ancient cave that we know that King David, as running away from Saul, hid in caves all over this region. And we look up at the black on top of the ceiling. Archaeologists came here and they said that this black dates back 2,000 years. It's actually ancient fire. Fire from the times of Bar Kokhba and Rabbi Akiva and their final revolt against the Romans. And so for 2,000 years, this cave was empty since that revolt. And now, two millennia later, we're back in this cave once again, reading the Psalms that David wrote in these caves. And being here is sort of like walking back in time and somehow being transported into the future. I'll tell you what this place in specific has done in my heart. King David, when he wrote the Psalms, we read the Psalms and we know that he was in direct conversation with God. So I've always known that when I pray, God can hear me. But 
That knowledge was brought from my head into my heart in this place, and now I feel it. I feel that God can hear me. I feel that just as King David poured out his heart to the living God of Israel, that same God is just as alive now as he was then, and he's hearing our prayers now, just as he did the prayers of King David, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in exactly this place, reviving us in a way that I could never have even imagined possible. You know, the last time the Jewish people were in this cave, we were fighting for our freedom and our rights to be in this land. And now 2,000 years later, we've returned to the same very cave as the European Union and the United Nations are passing resolutions to take Judea, what they would call the West Bank, away from the Jews. And here we are once again fighting for our freedom. But this time, we're going to win. You know, Yechezkel Ezekiel says that as the Jews leave the land of Israel, the divine presence leaves with Israel. And now as the exiles are being ingathered, you can really sense it in the land that God's presence is being restored to the land of Israel. And right now we know that the, the center stage is the Temple Mount. And once the Jews return to the land, that holiness is to spread all around the world. The sages of Israel say that the Temple Mount will be expanded to Jerusalem. The holiness of all of Jerusalem will be expanded to all of Israel. And the holiness of all of Israel will be expanded all around the world. And ultimately, the knowledge of God will cover the world like water covers the sea. And how do you see us in that process? Well, so every morning here in Israel, the Kohanim, the priests, who are the priests? They're the descendants of Aaron, Moses' brother Aaron. So his descendants are Kohanim, they're priests, and they bless us with the Kohanic blessing. And when I travel around the world, I like to bless those who come out to hear what we have to say and to have a little taste of Israel. I like to give them the same blessing, but I'm not a descendant of Aaron. How do I know that? Because those that are descendants of Aaron know it because their fathers were and their fathers' fathers were, and it was passed down all the way. So I was not a descendant of Aaron, but why do I say that blessing? because just as the priests in the temple were served a function of being intermediaries in some capacity between Israel and God, we are an Am Kohanim and a Goy Kadosh, as the Torah says, a nation of priests, a holy nation. We are to the world what the Kohanim, the priests, are to us. Some people say, you think you're better because we were Jews? No, we're not any better. We're just different. We have a certain function that we've been chosen for. If anything, it's a responsibility. And without the rest of the world, who would we be? We are here in order to be able to serve that function. So if that's true, the priests in the temple were there to bless the nation to, and to teach the nation. And here now, the Jewish people as a priestly nation are actually stepping into the role of blessing the nations and teaching Torah to the nations. Outside of Israel, the Torah and the prophets are black letters on white paper. But here in this place, the Torah is coming to life and it's now inviting us to participate and partner with God in creating these miracles as the redemption is unfolding. So we want to invite you, all of you, Jews from throughout the land of Israel, from around the world, non-Jews from among the nations, come here, experience for yourselves the majesty the miracles, the truth of this place. Come out to the Land of Israel headquarters where you can experience firsthand a sneak peek into redemption. says, I will bring you in from the four corners of the earth, and people will know that you are my people and that I am your God. Discover for yourself the miracle of the land and the courageous hearts of the people of Israel. I am 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 Israel. Visit IamIsraelFilm.com to begin your journey.